another edition of the Club Cool Podcast. I am here, Austin, Texas, the Washed Media Studios, and I'm your host, Barrett Dudley, joined, as always, by Mr. Phil Battaglia. How are you, Phil? Hey, I'm good. Are you, uh... I'm thawed out. You're thawed out. Mm-hmm. You're warm. I'll be good if I never see snow again in the rest of the Yeah, the, door, the clubhouse doors are open, and of course, this being Texas, it is, uh, it's 80 degrees outside, mm-hmm. a lot of sunshine. And, uh, you know, if you just touched down in London town, you wouldn't know that uh, we had eight inches of snow on the ground in multiple days in the single digits and ice everywhere. And really the scariest, most intense week that I've ever experienced in Texas. And uh, <laughs> this this comes right at the pretty much the one year mark of the pandemic. So it was really, you know, I keep saying like that, that the, uh, you know, 2021 is the sequel to 2020. And the writers just really st- took it up a notch. They, they, really they went did. above and beyond. They really did. Um, they re- they tried to throw another another curveball at us. They almost killed Tiger Woods. Thank God they didn't. Um, it just that would have really capped off uh, quite a month here. But uh, you and I, I think we both came out of this pretty pretty unscathed. We're as very it were. lucky. Very 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 lucky. I mean, I, I I'm sure if you guys have been paying attention or if you live in Texas. Maybe you read a little essay from like the head of Austin EMS. Did you read her little no. her her you know her piece on how crazy like the first three days were? But, I mean, awful, awful. Yeah, yeah. It's like it was a winter storm. It was it, it's a humanitarian crisis? Like people were dying in awful, awful ways that they you know that should never have happened. It was a complete and utter catastrophe. And so uh, you know we, we are we're clearly very fortunate through throughout all of it because we're now able to sit here a week later and and you know, kind of smile back on, on the, the insanity of it all. But of course, like, you know, heart goes out to everybody that was really brutally affected by it. Um, and yeah, we're just really lucky and fortunate to, to, to have come out unscathed. Um, but speaking of some of the lighter hearted moments, our man producer, Randy was just delivering fire, fire content. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you were, yeah, yeah. If you're not following, Randy Trembacki on Instagram, then then you missed out. Uh, the Chicago kid. The Chicago kid. There was a moment. There was a moment when Randy did a. You know, his power was out. He did a Survivor thing. You know, as if he was Mark Probst, the host of Survivor. <laughs> and then the next slide panned to who he was talking to, and Randy had erected multiple uh, balloon pillow people as the What's wrong uh, with you, man? yeah as the. <laughs> As the contestants of the show at the tri- at the uh, Survivor Tribunal, um, it was Randy. I could tell you had had uh, had a lot of free time on on your hands, and you know you. I'm happy that you were using it to spark creativity. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I just watched all the Marvel movies that I hadn't seen. <laughs> if you want to hear more about that, you can check out Oysters, Claims, and Goggles. But yeah, I, I, you know, we're watching Wandavision. Oh, are you? And so I needed. I, I just. Halfway through the the uh, this this season, I was like, okay, I guess I need the backstory, and so I went and filled in all the the, the important movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I hadn't seen. This um, is on Disney Plus. On Disney Plus, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, man, again, like we got really lucky. We did not lose power at my, at my place. We did lose water, um, and we were without we were without, without running water for two days. Uh, and then we had some friends in Dripping Springs uh, save us. Basically, we were able to flee and uh, and go stay with them, where they had heat, power, water, the whole shebang. So it was <laughs> it was actually turned into a just a you know a slumber party, a slumber party of a weekend, and and that was good too. But man, there is still a lot to to a lot of the pieces have yet to be picked up. Randy doesn't even have hot water yet. There's still all sorts of donations that need to be made and. And people that are, are are just without the essentials, and so still thinking about everybody affected in Texas, and and I mean, it was just, you know, it was the it was the it was the word of the years, unprecedented. Yeah, it's unprecedented. Mm-hmm. I've never I've I've lived in Houston. I, I I was born and raised in Houston, lived in Austin for fifteen or sixteen years now. Never seen that, ever, ever, ever have mm-hmm. I seen that. I mean, that was full on winter town. It was like it was we were Minnesota or Chicago or Montana or Colorado. This shit was bonkers. It was. Um and we clearly did not have the uh 
the infrastructure or the preparation. Well, it just solidifies for me that I'll never leave Texas. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. I have speaking of Chicago, actually, I, I'm I'm a huge, huge fan of so Chicago. Am I. Love Chicago in the summer. <laughs> and it's always been like my city where if like if I didn't live in Austin, I think that's probably where I'd want to live. And after like, okay, like for me it's like New York and LA are my two, you know, these are obviously kind of pipe dream places. Uh-huh. Like if I had the right gig, the right money, the right calling, like I would absolutely love to live in either one of those cities, at least for some period of time. But out of the cities that are realistic to live in, Chicago's like my always kind of been like my my backup, you mm-hmm. know? Like, oh, well, if it doesn't work in an awesome, maybe Chicago. <laughs> this week proved to me, I think, that that, that is uh, that's a bad that's a bad idea. Well, hang on. Randy, in, in a storm like that in Chicago, will the train still run? They they burn the they burn the the the, the, rails. the rails yeah, yeah. so you could get out we they were do, trapped they do, they do what now they burn the rails they light them on fire to clear the snow is this right mm-hmm. <laughs> say we don't have that see, no we don't we don't <laughs> we don't have the fire <laughs> we don't have that no I would love to have seen you out there lighting the roads on fire though. No, well, there you know, there's all sorts of conspiracy theories going on ah, now yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, that the snow is that. like is burnt. It, like the snow doesn't melt; it burns. Yeah, which means that this is actually like a Bill Gates yeah. weather event. I love that so much. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, like, it, there's got to be somebody out there that's drummed that's up a conspiracy. turning this into a conspiracy somehow, theory. some yeah. way, and they yeah. did. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, it also sparked what looks like the beginning of Matthew McConaughey's political career. Not sure if you saw that. No. His 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 videos of late have been very. Uh, I am paving the road for a gubernatorial run. Great, yeah, got my vote. Yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, fashion wise. Well, my Canada Goose parka got a week of unexpected wear. <laughs> that was nice, and you know that's a that's a piece that I was lucky enough to grab at one point several years ago, thanks to a, a mutual friend of ours who worked at St. Bernard Sports at the time, and I got a little discount code that I could apply to anything. And I snapped up a, a CG parka, which uh, is a controversial piece of clothing. I know, I know that people feel you some, got the fur on it too, some type you? of way about them. Mm, I might throw, some but it's but the fact is, when it's single digits, it's the it's it's a lifesaver, man. Like yeah, your Patagonia sw- down your sweater down sweater thing, your Nano Puff isn't going to get the job done. And it didn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> let me tell you, it didn't. <laughs> Thankfully, um, we had heat, so I wasn't out so, in it. So no, so I the, the fur hood is removable. Yeah, and I reserve it for fur hood circumstances. And you put it on. If I'm gallivanting around a ski town, I'll throw the fur hood on. Uh, okay, but for Texas, no, yeah. it stays off. Okay, good. you know what I mean? Yeah, it has its time and its place. Um, what else, man? You 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 hosted a couple yeah, of our friends. We that, had a commune. Were, can you tell me this? I, yeah. I've actually meant to reach out to them. Their their brand new floor didn't get ruined, did it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it came close. Okay. Yeah. They had a a, a breakage. Yeah. A, a hot water heater, oh. like every hot water heater that was externally yeah mounted yes. has been destroyed. Destroyed. In the yeah. city. Yeah. Uh no, we we formed a commune over at our place. That's our good. good friends That's good. Came over, did Katie you? and Jordan. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, everybody had their duties. <laughs> Mine was, was, was to worry uncontrollably like a mad person. Okay. And then okay. clean. When I get real like wound up, mm-hmm. I'll just start cleaning. Okay. I was just terrified because I got phone calls from some of our neighbors in the complex. Um, So we're in a condo complex. These aren't like stacked condos. They're more like townhouses. Mm-hmm. And so you are connected to someone, at least one person typically. And I was getting phone calls from some of our neighbors like, can you come help me find – the water main shut off at our place. So I went over there and saw what it looked like to have a pipe break. And that like singed into my brain. Just like with the water everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, if that happens, like I'll lose it. And, but so, um, we were lucky enough to not have that happen because I, I, thankfully the heat stayed on. If you have those pipes warm enough, but, um, we shut the water off, dude. After I saw that, like we kept dripping, but shut it off very soon after. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the commune was – it was fun, but uh, me being a warrior, I was always just waiting for something to go wrong. Yeah. It looked like you got a little skiing in, though. That wasn't me. That was that, that was Jordan. J- okay. I don't All know right. how to ski. <laughs> do I look like I know how to ski? I hate snow. I don't hate snow. Now I do. 
I don't like cold weather. Had you ever seen anything? So, so have you ever been skiing? Have you ever? No, never. But the 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 worst that I had seen anything comparable to this is when we went to New York for the trade show. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. a total whiteout yes. blizzard, and they yeah. shut down the city. Right. Which was a lot of fun because I had no responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah, had power. Yeah. The heat was on in the hotel room, so I was right. chilling. It was right. fun. We were in New York, you know. Yeah. Gallivanting around, nobody in the city. That's right. But when you have a a home that you yes own yeah everything is just that much more nerve wracking. But we made it out. It was cool. Um, we were very lucky. And but it was a real low point to go out and start gathering ice and snow in a bucket to bring up to the bathtub to melt. So then you could then scoop it out to flush, to flush the, toilet. the toilet. Yeah, this is I, I've been having this conversation with with people over the last several days as well. The this year, twenty twenty one and and twenty twenty to a, a different extent. You just we've been learning so much that mm-hmm. we never thought we'd learn. Like for example, I know more about the impeachment process now than I ever thought I would need to know. Right? I don't want to know. <laughs> um, and another thing, and 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 this week, I had no idea. How much damn water it takes to flush a toilet? Right, almost two gallons. It's we're talking nerve wracking, isn't it? That How, what it's a very waste! Concerning. Yeah, what a waste! Yeah, yeah, no good. That's no good. That's no good. I my the our our, our friends that that let us stay, they're they're in a newer build, mm-hmm. and their toilets have a half flush on it. And now yeah. I'm, I'm sold on the half flush because yeah. it just seems like a great way to save. You shouldn't. You can't be dumping two gallons of water down the toilet every time you pee. Yeah, that was it's very, awful. Very concerning to see that. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the snow, I mean that 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 was part of what where we were just like, we got to get out of here if at all possible because mm-hmm. we're like we're we taking an hour like harvesting snow, boiling it, doing it, straining it into to you know to a cooler to try to like go put it in the toilet, and and you're doing an hour's worth of work, and you're getting like a quart yeah, of water after melting down snow. Yeah. It was is people were drinking that's that like that was no good. When when you let that thing settle, there's so much gross shit that comes yeah. to, uh, and settles at the bottom. Yes. And we were straining it too. I know. So we were trying to strain it as well. Even strain, do you still get all the little nastiness. particles and nastiness, but Yeah. Yeah. That was um, something, man. It was it, it was, was really, really crazy. Spooky was uh Jordan um they lived in Denver, so this guy knows how to drive in the, the snow and ice. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I, I, I've driven in ski towns before. But again, like they're clearing the roads. They're plowing. They're salting. They're doing all of that. So like I have I have a fundamental understanding of what to do and what not to do. But this was this was next level stuff. Another thing that I learned, snow, ch- snow chains for tires, yeah. not that expensive. I'm going to buy a set. And keep them somewhere. They're, they're, it's like 40 bucks right. on Amazon. Yeah. We should just uh, we're, we should all just own them. Yeah. Because my God, the the, the driving, the, the the wrecks, the so we the drove and down sliding was uh, insane. Lamar, which was at night, totally black. There's no power to anything. <laughs> so all those big apartments, all those big everything, totally black. And there's ca- like abandoned cars in the middle of the road, abandoned yeah. cars like up on shit, and uh, it was really spooky. People like just kind of walking in the middle of the road, aimlessly. Man, looking yeah. for food. Um, I'm gonna post uh, a, a couple of. Uh, I'll go on the Instagram stories at Club Cool Pod and and post uh, a couple of, you know, a a couple of posts that I'll share on the stories. If you um, want to donate or or contribute to to something that's benefiting, there are a lot of mutual aid funds. Uh, you can also just obviously Google like Texas mutual aid funds or Texas Winter Storm Relief and and find places and and uh and groups and organizations and funds to donate to 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 help those still in need um because this man it it it's certainly crazy to talk about but but it it wrecked a lot of a lot of lives um and we're we're again we're just fortunate to to be here pretty pretty unscathed um and now it's it's 80 degrees so we we're it's almost march when we come back next week it's going to be march so, uh, you know, to keep it moving, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk spring. We're gonna talk spring gear here. It's it's time. It's time. It's time. Um, m- most of March is still is still winter. We'll get we'll we'll continue to get cooler days throughout the month, but we'll also now start to get these eighty degree days peppered in when we're where it's like back to shorts and t shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got some some overall thoughts that I wanted to share here, just about spring in general, and then. 
I've got a few kind of bubbling trends that I want to touch on. The trends that I'm going to hit, I'm going to talk about spring in a general sense, and then we'll touch on some trends. They're not necessarily like spring trends. They're kind of like stuff that's bubbling that we'll start to see this spring, but that but that will just kind of like be around moving forward into this year. Uh, we'll we'll touch on on kind of what what we're expecting to see uh, from spring. We'll just talk about it broader. Um, so yeah, that's what we got planned for today. By the way, we've got a few hotline calls just kind of hanging out, waiting to be played. But I'd like to get a few more. So if you've got uh, if you've got a spring take. Or, or a question for us about spring gear or anything else you want to you want to throw at us um, dial us up man drop a drop a voicemail it's 833 club <laughs> coo c l u b c o o and uh, i'm just going to make you look at your phone and, and figure out what that number is how about that uh, okay spring gear but first let's take a quick break here from today's sponsor Today's podcast is brought to you by the Headspace app. Wouldn't it be great if there was a pocket-sized guide that helped you sleep, focus, act, and just be better? Well, there is. And if you have 10 minutes, Headspace can change your life. Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations and a very, very easy-to-use app. It is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. Whatever your situation, Headspace can help you feel better. Are you overwhelmed with work, with stress, with family, with the pandemic, with with general malaise and fatigue and and just, you know, scaries about 2021? I know we all still have them. Well, Headspace has little three-minute SOS meditations for you. Or maybe you are dealing with some insomnia, you're having a little trouble falling asleep. Headspace has wind-down sessions that their members swear by. And there's even a little something for parents. Headspace has morning meditations that you can do with your kids. Their approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. I, I, I mean, there are there's never not a time where you need a little headspace. So you've even got some yoga that I like to use, little oh. short sessions. Um, just any time where, where, where I'm just feeling like a little down. I know the, 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 the short days of winter really gets me. I get a little SAD, the seasonal affective disorder. And sometimes I just pop into to Headspace for a little five-minute session to just kind of like clear my head and refocus and tell myself, you know what? Daylight Savings Time will be here very soon. Can't wait. To help me out. But that's how I've been using it recently. It's backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. Makes it very easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule anytime, anywhere. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash club cool. That's headspace.com slash club cool for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now, so head to headspace.com dot com slash club cool today okay phil um are you ready to talk about the warm weather gears yes let's do it uh I, here's where i want to start is by talking about my my uh the not gear what i mean by that is i was i was pretty vocal throughout the first year of the pandemic about not really slowing down as far as like my browsing my shopping my purchasing you know i think i was buying I was probably buying fewer items, but my overall spend wasn't really like reduced that much. Yeah, you know, I was still very like invested in like new drops and and adding pieces to the collection and curating and selling. The, the spring twenty one is the very first season now, a year into this, where I don't feel like super jazzed about the new stuff coming out, mm-hmm. and not not to say that the new stuff coming out isn't good. I mean, me personally. I'm not like, yeah, I'm ready to buy some new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, a year in, it's like finally kind of broken me a little bit. And it's this is for a lot of different reasons. But I think the first and foremost is, look, this has been a year of very, very few instances of hanging out with friends, going to dinners, traveling, going on vacations, like ha- uh, concerts, bars, ACL, festivals, all that type of, you know. Anything. All of those things that for me personally are like the most enjoyable things in life, like the, like this has been very, very tough on, on 
somebody like me that like, you know, I value socializing and shared experiences over almost everything else. Now with a year of, of basically none of that, it's like, I'm, I'm so much lusting for just like the contact and the hanging out that the, that the, you know, that 50% of it that where I'm also like looking forward to like what I get to wear to those various things Mm -hmm. is essentially evaporated. And it's so much so that I'm, I almost like have this like weird desire to just be like unclothed. And maybe that's like a subconscious desire. Maybe that's like a subconscious desire that I really want like a tropical vacation that I really want like some type of beach or Caribbean or Mexico vacation. But like, I, I, I don't know what's, what feels really romantic to me right now is just like being in like shitty clothes like rags, just like, you know, mm-hmm. trash t-shirts and your old board, sh- board shorts, just like sitting around drinking beers. Mm-hmm. But it, that very, very, very much, I'm now like super keen on on just getting back to the experience of those things. And and I mean, y'all know me, like, like what I get to wear to those things has typically been a, a huge part of that for me. And I'm not saying that that's going away, but uh, just the way that my where my mind is right now is like is just kind of my mind's eye has this visualization of of something just a little crunchier, I guess, a little less polished. Mm-hmm. And so Good. for I like that. So for that reason, I I I, I don't know. I don't. I I just don't have the sense of like uh, of the of the need to kind of to kind of go get new things. Beyond that, there are a few other things that play into this. Spring drops a little later this year. Uh, the pandemic has affected global supply chain, obviously. Stuff has been slower uh, to be produced due to COVID restrictions, um, also slower to ship. That's the, really the big thing. There are huge port backups right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just tell you tell you from Haller experience that uh, we are uh, releasing the our, our spring 2021 collection today, but there's a lot of stuff that we won't have on site yet because it's still on the ocean or waiting at a port to come off of a ship they're just super backed up right now Mm -hmm. and so i think you're seeing that across the industry where people's spring drops are are getting pushed into march where usually we start seeing those early mid-february and they're just they've been kind of slow to roll out so it definitely has felt like there's been kind of a dead zone which i've spoken to before there's january Mid January to mid February, usually kind of a month of a dead zone, but now we're like stretching that into six, eight weeks of like not really seeing the hot new shit. Mm-hmm. That's another part of it. Um, also, uh, after kind of like the first full season, fall, winter 2020, uh, the, of pandemic life, you know, like it, pandemic kind of interrupted the whole spring too, but it was like so we're all still kind of wrapping our heads around it at that point. Fall winter was like the first full encapsulated season where it's just like, you know, mm-hmm. locks on the door. We're not doing shit, basically. And so uh, while I did get to wear a few things that I purchased new, a bunch of stuff that I already owned didn't get didn't went unworn, essentially, and probably won't be worn because it's going back to storage. It's going. Yeah, it's the, the closets are about to get flipped again here in the next <laughs> uh, in, in about a month, probably. And uh, and yeah, a lot of that stuff will will be relegated to the winter closet. Did you did you get rid of your storage? Oh yeah, I don't have the storage unit. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that would be overkill. <laughs> 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 if I can't fit everything I own in the house, yeah, there's an issue. There's an issue. <laughs> That's kind of the the apartment makes more sense. Yes, you fit it. It was a the... 500 square foot apartment. Yeah. Like yeah, with yeah, come on, with one closet. Can't be expected to 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 fit everything I own and everything that Laura owns in one yeah one measly closet like that, but no, but it, but there is still like a storage, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We flip the closets and and it all gets pushed to the back. Um, so let's see what else is on my list here. Another piece of this is that so this is I talked about uh you know like I'm glamorizing other things right now. I'm romanticizing a different vision. Uh, the, 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 the shared experiences now, like you know, we've gone without them for a year now so that they are, they are just even in higher demand. Then there's the fact that stuff hasn't really started releasing. So it's been this longer period. It's given me more time to, to just be like, well, guess something's coming out. Uh, and then on top of that, this season feels a little directionless. 
And again, it's not surprising because we're not out there seeing the direction. We're not seeing what people are wearing. We're not at trendy restaurants. We're not at festivals. We're not at concerts. And like, you know, there's just so much that we that we get and that we gather from the people watching, which is completely absent, essentially. Mm-hmm. That there, there's like. You know, starting, I was looking around, going to the sites, looking at the clothes, looking back at the collections, thinking about what I wanted to wear. And it just, there, there doesn't seem to be like any one main direction. So that's a, that also makes it a little complicated to know kind of what you're interested in adding because it's just still kind of this big mishmash of stuff. Um, and that's where we'll start just talking about what the scene looks like in general. Uh, unless, unless you had anything to add just about how you're feeling going into this spring summer season with regards to to your to your wardrobe to to the clothes, I'm looking forward to getting vaccinated. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, man. I don't care. I, I'll wear whatever as long as I can go and see people. Yeah, seriously. I, I mean, there's some stuff that I do have my eye on, but um, I'll save that for the the Patreon post. Okay, but the the overall like, yeah, man, this, I can't the, imagine the, buying new spring clothes. Th- with that's what I'm saying. Any I, inclination that I'm actually going to get to wear these things anywhere other yeah. than to pick up takeout or yeah. to go sit on a patio, which would be nice. Yeah, I think I it, right, and I, a lot of people I think have felt that already. But that that fatigue is I think is really sit settling in for me now as well. And like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like online sales are still great. They are great for clothing. Yes. Where are these people wearing? I guess they're just keeping it on. In the I house. mean, it, yeah, I, I, it will be interesting to see again if there is, if like the the dip is now basically. Yeah. Because when as we approach this one year milestone, like it, it it's really really like this is just tiresome. Man, like mm-hmm. people are fucking tired of this. It's awful. Yeah, and so uh, you, you know, it, it's like we, it kind of feels like everybody like could sustain hope for a year. Yeah, two right? years. The positive outlook remained for a year, uh-huh. and yeah. now the attitude is that just you're telling me just, two years. Just, no, I'm out. Just give me the just give me the vaccine. Yeah, like f- figure out how to get me the vaccine. Once and I so, get vaccinated, I'm going to be the most anti-masker you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna swing completely opposite. That's that's probably an unpopular opinion, but I <laughs> but I totally feel you. I abs I man, I feel I'm that. I'm kidding, but can you not wait for the I day? Cannot wait to when not it's have to wear a just mask. normal to not have a mask on and like yes. not feel yes apprehensive about and, like, I, and 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 I'm and I'm now you you know we joke about that swing, but I but I feel it too. Right? You know who I hate right now? Fauci. Fauci. <laughs> God damn, he's already swung. I'm swung. I'm d- like yeah. stop. I don't want that guy to talk anymore. Uh huh. Because he's not. He's nothing but glass half empty. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, we'll probably be wearing masks through 2022. No, just shut up, dude. Right. Don't. We're don't getting vaccine. Say, don't say that because yeah. I don't believe it. One. Two. I'm just like ready for like. Yes. W- v- vaccine me up. Yeah. And then let's stop worrying about this because we all take huge amount of risk every single day just by getting in our cars and driving down the highway. Ask Tiger Woods. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. It's a single car accident. Yeah. Right? He's, you know? So, I, I, yeah, I'm absolutely ready. Um, okay. But uh, also but- the handshake. The last thing. I was thinking about this today. Everybody is, is, is out on handshakes. I'm in. I'm back in. I've started doing handshakes again. You have? Yeah. See, to we, me, we it had doesn't... we had a guy come in that we one of our vendors that we work with. Yeah, uh, had a little had business stuff uh-huh. yesterday. We had a fit session. Did the you know handshake? N- handshake. Never Wouldn't met this guy f- before in, it, in person. Doesn't it feel so weird to be like nice to meet you and you're just like the looking whole, at them? Yes, yes. It's always it's also like even like the two or three times that we have gone to dinner with friends over the 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 past year. Yeah, dab them up. Like yeah, and we're like hi. Yeah, and there's like no like physical contact or greeting uh-huh. and then the buy is even worse you're like oh okay well see you later done with it <laughs> get in the car done with it <laughs> yeah yeah it sucks you know it what sucks. i you know what i don't miss ubers and ride share okay i've always hated them yeah i don't like them either they're gross you have to wait i don't like waiting they're gross again yeah 
And that's it. Yeah. I'm with you. I, okay. I feel you. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, back to the regular scheduled programming. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've outed ourselves as uh, anti-maskers. <laughs> um, no, okay. All right. Here's what I'm seeing out there. This is what this is what's out there right now as far as the spring looks and the spring gear. And like I said, this is just kind of a mishmash of sorts. Uh, there's the return of prep. This is yeah. the loafer trend continuing. Um, brighter colors kind of coming back. Uh, stuff like Argyle and kind of like your louder prints, stuff like that. You know, Noah just did a collaboration with Barber. Where the it's like one of the, the the very popular print was like a big paisley, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, the continuation of the Japanese influence, com- which combines kind of with like a '60s Americana mm-hmm. kind of crunchy vibe. So you still got the tie dye, you got your baggier denim silhouettes. This is where you tie in a lot of the military inspiration, um, whether it's color palette, a lot of olives, or you know, big pockets, the cargoes, the field jackets, stuff like that. Um, this is where like your your mules, your Birkenstocks come into play, and then um, the other footwear, whether it's like a wallaby or a chunky derby or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's your it's 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 not sneakers, but it's not loafers either. Uh, and then the third thing here is like your Los Angeles skater stees continues to play a role as well. So Nike's big influence comes here with the dunks, uh, sneakers in general, whether it's Jordans or 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 you know, or whatever else is is out there that people are are fiending for, uh, raw hems, flannels, and then you know the, still a lot of like logos, a lot of big graphics, a lot of hoodies, stuff like that. But the ho- you know John Elliott, Amiri, Urban Outfitters, like that that whole s- skate LA steezy type of look yeah still in play as well what happened to amiri he's doubling down i haven't i guess i don't follow him anymore but i haven't seen anything about him he's not really changing the look is he no okay yeah um so here are a few things after i just told you that i wouldn't be doing any shopping here are a few things that i am that 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 i do have like the antennas out for Yeah, yeah right just like a couple of things. Um, crazy pants and normal pants. Crazy pants. The the pants thing is kind of like a, it, it's a never ending saga for me, I feel like. It's the one piece of my wardrobe that I, that I kind of constantly feel like is never right. Mm. Um, I don't know why that is. A multitude of different reasons. But I, 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 feel, I always feel like I'm filling in gaps there. So I'll continue to look for like, you know the perfect denim, the perfect lo- kind of looser but not too baggy denim, which I re- which I really need in like a washed black right now, mm-hmm. and will probably want in a white as well because my one remaining pair of white jeans is like very skinny, tapered and cropped. Um, and then uh, you know, like a- a- Ama's first drop is coming out this Friday. It looks like there might be like a very bold floral printed pair of double knees, <clears throat> something like that could be interesting. Uh, little smaller indie brands like Hayato are doing the the you know, kind of crazy pants stuff. And, uh, and so that's, that I'm, my eyes are out for stuff like that. I want a new pair of sunglasses. I don't know where, where from yet, but I, but, but I've been, I've been looking at sunglasses for a really long time now. Mm-hmm. And in, in this kind of zone where I'm not really feeling the, the, the desire to like buy new clothes, it feels like it might be a good time to buy an accessory. Mm-hmm. One that it is still, I'm still driving. Yeah. You know, still coming to the studio, driving to the office every once in a while, going to get groceries, still using sunglasses quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it feels like a good purchase. Um, And then as far as like big spends, because I don't feel like this like big desire to like continue to add. If I do make a big purchase, it feels like it's going to be an investment piece from Bodie or Capital. So those are the three things that are like, or like, uh, despite the, my, my, my overall sentiment towards spring 21. I, uh, those are the things I still maybe have in my head a little bit. Will you throw up this slide about stitch work? Yeah. And yeah, walk we're us through. Yeah. So as we talk about trends now, uh, and like I said up front, these are not necessarily spring trends. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not talking, like it's not going to be like, oh, like camp collar shirts and 
um, you know, Patagonia baggies and like, you know, bright colored, like it's not going to, it's, these are not necessarily spring specific, but they are, they are trends. And the other thing is you guys can all Google like spring 21 men's trends and pull up lists from Vogue or GQ or wherever and like see some stuff. So this is, I tried to pick things here that, that isn't, that, 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 Try to pick trends here that aren't listed on those like, you know, like, hey, we looked at every runway show and this is what we saw. Yeah. Right. This is Barrett's list. This is, yeah, this is my list. This is stuff that I'm noticing. Okay. Big trend number one. And this is, this is very, very big. This is, this is going to be a running theme for the, for the year. I can tell you that. And it's what I call, that's what I'm calling stitch work. Um, Those pants are great. You have probably seen the hoodies. From ERL, mm-hmm. we've pulled up the the Bieber fit in one of these hoodies, mm-hmm. uh, and they are big and they are bright, and they are usually paneled. So I've got them up here now on screen. If you're watching on YouTube.com/slash/WatchMedia, and so what we're seeing here is like this is not a print to make these big curves. Those are actually stitched seams Mm -hmm. and this is what what you're doing here is you're showing your work this is make as we say this is a tough pattern to cut Mm -hmm. because those cuts obviously need to be perfect they're not straight they're not straight or linear lines they're not typical cuts so this is this is kind of a spin of like your patchwork type stuff but it's the stitch work instead of the patchwork um so erl is kind of like the first brand to, to kind of make waves with this look but there are a bunch of others doing it. So this is an ERL puffer jacket that is a lot more than just the wavy stitches, but but whole you know whole shapes that they're doing with the stitch work. Um, they have a, a another very famous jacket where it's like a whole sunburst, sunrise, sunset pattern. That's really cool. That's all stitch work. Yeah. Uh, this is a couple pair of jeans from an up and coming guy out of Dallas named Cody Phillips. Um, th- th- these are not released yet, but he's been posting these. On on Instagram, uh, you know, talking about how this is something that he plans to release in the future. Uh, very very cool stuff here, showing all the lines and doing the different patchwork. Mm-hmm. And then the this is a batch of solid colored hoodies, showing all the off that stitch work from another very small brand called Kai, Kai is sorry K Y is sorry on Instagram. If you want to follow along with him, uh, but this is. And then there's, uh, this is another example of this. This is kind of the most mainstream version. There was a capsule uh, off-white and Jordan brand that had a lot of this. And the, mm-hmm. the, the hoodie is kind of what stood out to me is the big example uh, of this going forward. The, the, the through line here, especially in these first two trends, kind of carries over with the it's what we talk about liking with brands like Bodie and Capital and about like the vintage renaissance as well is that these things feel they're, they're, they're signs of craftsmanship. They're signs of like love put into the garment. It feels like somebody did something with their hands. It's not so, you know, it, it, it doesn't feel cookie cutter, mm-hmm. right? And so this the, this next trend that I have up is just patches. Again, this plays on a 90s thing as well, but just patches, whether they are sewn on to the jacket in mass, like uh, like this piece from Bodhi, uh, is very popular uh, piece right now. It's a runway piece that has been seen on a couple celebrities now. Uh, very cool. This is a backpack from Givenchy, a bunch of crazy patches on it. Uh, this is a, uh, a Golden Goose crew neck sweatshirt, which has a multitude of patches. And then uh, I pulled these uh, Budweiser themed sweat shorts off Urban Outfitters. Nice. And again, you can see a bunch of different, you know, they're taking all those different Budweiser logos and kind of overlaying the the, the print. And, and some of those are actual patches, I believe, as well. Uh, but this is, I mean, this can be as, as simple as stuff that we used to make, right? Or that Howler makes was like, we've got a pair of corduroy shorts that are about to release that have, um, you know, typically have had like either a woven label or a piece of embroidery on the mm-hmm. butt pocket. And this year they've got like a big, cool graphic patch. That's cool. Yeah. Um, like hats. That. We've always done patch hats. Yeah. So it can be as simple as stuff like that or as kind of 
over the top as as some of these the the, the multi patch stuff like this. And this is what I'm kind of seeing coming from the 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 high design realm. Um, but again, it, we like this because, look, man, you can go buy patches from Fort Lonesome. You can go buy patches from Urban Outfitters. You can collect patches, vintage patches on eBay, and then you could do whatever you want with them. Yeah. You can sew them on an old Jansport ba- uh, backpack. You can buy a fifty dollar jacket from Levi's and sew them up on that. Like, it's all this. It's very, it's individualistic expression. It's vintage. It's collection. It's uh, it's handiwork. It's all that type of stuff that that's kind of stemming from this, you know, artisanal uh, kind of old world look, right? Uh, so that's that's number two that I have up here. Uh, and then number three, I just call it safari. That hat. <laughs> um, this is one of the directions camp collars. The, the short sleeve camp collar shirt, it's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. You're going to see a lot of that again this spring. Um, but fewer floral patterns. Yeah. And more twists on what to do with that style. And so the, one of the areas that I've seen is just solid colors. We went from like the florals to like the art deco to like a little bit of Japanese type, you know, shibori tie dye prints and stuff like that from blue, 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 blue Japan. Animal prints or capital. We've had animal prints from Wacko Maria and the like, and now we're just doing solids. I've seen a lot of this from Gitman Vintage. Uh, this one is from Urban Outfitters, and it's just uh, it's camp collar, but in a very neutral solid tone, and maybe you add a few kind of hand pockets down on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, but th- this look in general, what I'm calling safari, it can be accessories like this next hat that we have, which is just like you know, a bucket hat with kind of a, a camo-esque print on the bottom. This one is, is Versace. Um, or it can be whole looks like this. This is Banana Republic, where it's just very much, it's a combination of like fabric, color, and pocketing, mm-hmm. right? So we've got khakis and dark olives and big patch pockets on the front of a shirt. So the, I call it Safari because it kind of looks like stuff that, a, you know, arose from being in Africa, like, you know, a lot of pockets, a lot of pockets and a lot of those, those desert tones, basically yeah, like a director. Yeah. Uh, and, and yes. And like, you might be looking at some cheetahs or something. Sure. Yeah. Watching an elephant. Uh, and then this last kind of crazy kooky piece here is from, uh, one of my favorite new brands, Nicholas Daly. And it is just like, you know, it's, it's full tilt from a collection that is very much safari inspired. Uh, this collection for Spring 21 is called Stepping Razor. Um, he's of Scottish and Jamaican descent, and so he kind of has a lot of that influence anyway. And uh, there there are things as simple as like a khaki camp collar shirt, but I just I threw this this vest on here because it kind of it shows the extreme version of yeah. this whole like safari kind of desert wildlife feel. Um. So those are the three. Those are those are my three big ones that I'm I'm kind of re- seeing bubble up here. Uh, now, a couple things I'll, I'll pull up here. This is from British GQ, and this is talking about the 15. You know, this is their this is like a list, like I told you about the biggest spring summer trends for uh, for men. Spring summer 2021, and they've just kind of you know looked at all the runway shows and diffused what they're seeing into uh, into a list here. Um, and I actually have a rebuttal to a couple of these. Ooh. Yeah. Namely, let's see, where is it? Big and bold Bermuda shorts. I disagree. This is very much a runway and designer thing. This will not trickle down into mainstream, mainstream fashion just yet. And here's why. Because while a lot of fashion trickles down from these runway shows, as we well know, these days, more than ever, it's trickling up as well. And do you know who loves very short shorts? Gen Z. <laughs> and they true. are not letting That's true. tiny inseams for dudes go away. Uh-huh. Because they like to stay tan <laughs> and they like to show off their worked out thighs while they're doing their TikTok dances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do not, I think shorter inseams are here to stay for, for, for a, the next few seasons I do not think that these big and baggy Bermuda shorts are coming full press into your closet. They're not flattering, man. 
I don't like them. That's why we went away from them in the first place. My legs aren't built for these anyway. They're not built for them. They're definitely awful on guys like you and I under five mm-hmm. ten. Like it's just not like this is this is, and you know I get it. Like GQ can put this out because they're only taking their cues from what they see, saw on the runway. Yeah. But the but but you know you might see some bold prints. You might see a lot of pockets. But it's not happening in these big ass baggy Bermuda shorts. <laughs> not a chance. Um, let's see. I, uh, so I had a, I had a, a quick issue with that one. And then here they also list pastel splash and then they show like some blushes and some periwinkles, but not really like full, full bore prep polo pastel. Mm -hmm. And that's an, that's an important note here with the, with the, you know, kind of resurgence, the rehashing of some of the prep stuff is it is not pastel. It is not Vineyard Vines and Brooks Brothers. It's way, it's it's what it always is, and that's more like Take Ivy, East Coast, sweater vest, you know, playing croquet, like pleated trousers and and penny loafers type thing. Mm-hmm. It's not really the 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 frou frou southern thing that we kind of envision when we think about some of yeah. the prep that we grew up with. It's not a baby yellow polo shirt, is what I'm saying. So just that's cool if that never comes back. Just be careful with this whole the the you know oh pastels are hot well sort of some of these more interesting color colorways are but not like Easter egg pastels. So I just just needed to pick a bone with those two. Um, there are a few things on here that we've talked about before. Obviously, the return of bigger, baggier, uh, more casual suiting. Um, here's the bright you know brighter colors like I mentioned. Uh, bolder prints they talk about fresh florals and uh, you know a few things other here that that we've that we've mentioned in passing um, trench coat go wide or go home bigger silhouettes uh, and then new utility kind of speaks to the the safari thing that I'm talking about as well uh, any takeaways for you from from you Phil you said you wanted to oh wait you said you were saving a few things for yeah but for, I am gonna have to give in to the I'm not gonna. Ha- I can't stick with my skinny black jeans for forever. Just, not just exclusive, right? I'm gonna have to get something more relaxed, which I already have, but even more relaxed. I need to relax. You gotta relax, man. <laughs> I saw. Uh, let me just pull this up because I I, I want to do it justice. I thought this was a really good tweet. By the way, if you if you don't follow Derek Guy on Twitter, Guy, he's the he's the best fashion follow, I would say. He's very, very funny. Um, he has been around for quite a while. I think he's right around our age. He's he um, he started a blog called dieworkwear.com, which has been around for quite some time. He may have ended up on it a time or two. And he's an editor at uh, Put This On, which is another you know outlet of sorts. Uh, so he he tweeted yesterday, and I thought this was great. Let's see if I can find it. So many tweets. Here we go. The tweet was. Thinking about how people born in the 1980s were able to wear skinny jeans in their 20s and then mercifully relax jeans as they approach 40. Whereas people born in 2000s have to wear relaxed jeans in their 20s and then when trends swing back, uh-huh, they're back skinny in- jeans as they approach 40. <laughs> that's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. That, that's what, I mean, this is so, this is so nail on the head, or yeah, nail on the head because the what the my big, you know, like, come to Jesus moment for all of this has been like, God, these pants are so much more comfortable. <laughs> right? Like, you know, and I'm, you, you, I throw back on the skinny jeans and I'm just like, this is not comfortable. Like, how was I going out full nights in these, you know, nut huggers, right? Like, <laughs> so it's just, it's, this is, I, this was really perfect because he, he's right. He's right. Like, you know, as we're getting a little bit closer to, to, to 40 years old, we're, we're going to be allowed to, to relax the silhouettes and be, be comfy AF, and and I, I am very grateful for that. Um, there's still, you know, and and right after this or right before this, he also uh, tweeted a pair of jeans that are Japanese exclusives by Nautica. Um, they're here, and they are basically whoa. They are basically full jinkos. <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> and uh, to use his own word, mercifully. This is not the bagginess that we're talking about here. <laughs> like there is, there there is a very you know, it's a wide spectrum. It, it's it's, but it's a gravitation away from the skin tight Eddie Slimane, you know, 
Saint Laurent like rock star look. It's just we're loosening up a little bit. The inseams are coming up, coming up a bit. But you know, when you're talking about like finding something more relaxed, I'm not telling you to 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 go yeah. pool around your ankles baggy. I'm just you know you Can't can just get something a little bit more comfortable. That's that's it. But this is yeah. Uh, this is clearly a uh, hyperbole almost of of. Uh, very much an exaggeration of, of what we're going for here. Although, if, if they're doing it in Japan, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any uh, Anything else, man, that you got here for our, for our spring looks or spring trends? I can't wait for spring. Yeah. Especially after this last week, man. Can't get here soon enough, am I right? You are right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm hopeful that we're able to, to, to do a little bit more this spring, get well, outdoors a little bit. Name this guy one more time that, that does the denim. The denim is Cody Phillips. Yeah. Those are, those are something I on like Instagram. That. It's he's uh <clears throat> by Cody Phillips, Cody with a K, mm -hmm. uh, check him out. He's a Dallas guy. He's, he's doing all this from Dallas. I, I actually should probably reach out to him and he'll be on the show next see week. See if he wants to get on the podcast before he gets too big because he, he is, he is on the come up. I, I do expect him to to be to become very popular this year. Um, yeah. Well, that's about it, man. Kill. Uh, once again, call in. Give us your takes. Eight three three Club Coup, <laughs> and uh, check us out on Patreon. Right now is a really really good time to join the Patreon, and here's why. It's February twenty fourth. There are only a few more days left in February. You're going to get multiple pieces of content over the next few days, and Go join the cool kids right now. It's only $2 a month, and you're going to get everything this month. This is a starter. It's a trial month for the new pieces of content that we're delivering. I'm just going to give them to everybody this month to see if you want to upgrade. If you like them, step it up. Join the extremely cool kids. It's 5 bucks a month, but you're going to get more bonus content a month. It's an extra editorial, a couple extra short-form podcasts, but you're going to get it all. Just so go check us out, patreon.com slash club cool, cool, club cool. And the hotline, 833-CLUB-COO, C-O-O. Follow us at Club Cool Pod on Instagram. Um, we've been very absent. It's Again, it's been hectic. It's been craziness. Uh, and uh, so I, 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 I will return to, uh, to posting some content there as well. Uh, donate to some of the mutual aid funds here in Texas. They still need your help. Uh, our, thoughts, our thoughts go out to everybody still affected by this and that was affected uh, last week. We are we're happy to be back in studio and uh, you know able to do the podcast. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. That'll do it for today, folks. Later. Bye bye. <laughs>